One, two, three. It's Halloween. Ooh. Hi everybody, I hope life's treating you well and uh, COVID is not uh, impacting upon you in any great way. It has in my family, sadly to say, but I'm not going to go there. Now then, um, being a Halloween month, uh, I thought it appropriate for us to take a look at Raven Loft. Uh, it was written by Tracy Laura Hickman and uh, published by TSR back in 1983. A little bit of background, uh, Raven Loft was, uh, as I said, uh, written by Tracy Lorna Hickman, who ran their own little campaign uh, with a sort of Friday, Friday Nighters, and uh, they conceived of Raven Loft, then called Vampire, also Pharaoh, and I think Rakshasa as well, at around about the same time. Uh, Raven Loft was played and refined over the course of game, uh, gaming nights with the group, uh, each era was sort of quickly ironed out and uh, the thing polished and refined and made a lot better. Now they did publish Vampire as uh, under the banner Daystar West and Pharaoh the same, but they ran into financial difficulties, the both of them, and they decided that uh, they would go to TSR, sell the models and then hopefully recoup the uh, money in order to pay off the debts because they think they were on the verge of losing the house. So TSR looked at the models and said not only will we buy them, we'll employ you. And therefore they started working with TSR full time. And it's not a, a great uh, hardship because TSR could see quality when they stared them in the face. And believe you me, what they offered was quality. And Ravenloft was already a polished uh, uh, design. It was uh, given by TSR then and polished up even more. And it was sort of uh, put into the TSR ethos of the day. Uh, refined errors taken out and so on and so forth until it almost gleamed. So when it was published in 1983, it was as good as you, they could get it. Uh, so when people actually bought it, they bought a high standard and a high quality. Um, when you compare it to other offerings around about the same time, uh, TSR had a run of luck with really good quality models being uh, published under the I numbering. Uh, this I think is I6. Now uh, that I standards, I standards, I standards, uh, so that you've had a good um, good quality product and uh, they sort of had the run then if you like of the best of it at the time. Uh, other models uh, that came out before and since had a mediocre sort of, um, uh, sort of output or look at if you like. There was some quality before that but uh, this particular sort of run uh, showed and Raymond Loft itself stood head and shoulders above anything in that particular uh, numbering of the I series. So, what do you get then? Uh, you get uh, the full usual 32 page booklet, but uh, with maps. Now, the maps are different, uh, and they were printed on the stiff cardboard, as we know. Uh, but they were isometric maps rather than top down looking maps. And uh, it was a unique experience to see those maps uh, printed out in the, uh, in the covers. Um, a lot of people, well not a lot of people, but some people had difficulty matching the maps with uh, the text on the um, in the model itself uh, because of the matter of sort of a shift in the perspective slightly to be able to read and uh, interpret the map. I mean I had no problem with it but I can understand from looking at some of the rooms why people did have a little bit of difficulty in understanding and reading those maps. So it's just uh, a matter of uh, looking at the text very carefully and taking it room by room slowly and sort of putting your finger on the map and sort of sorting out where you are with it. Um, yeah, it makes a pleasant change. Um, another change as well, I would say was even better in my own personal opinion, is the fact that the previous models and indeed some other models before and since and even during uh, all concentrated on the dungeon and the environments around the dungeon. They never really had a character that stood out. I mean, there was Thurston, but that was just a peripheral character. It wasn't really fleshed out in huge amount of depth. So you never had any sort of sense of being of that character when you explored the Forgotten Temple of Thurston. You knew it was there, but you didn't really sense him, if you know what I mean. In Ravenloft, the central character and the whole model centered around Strad von Sonnevik. 
and he's all pervading uh, no matter where the characters go or what they do they're always aware of standing in the background I mean I've been uh, plays where in the games which I never met Strad uh, but I'm very very conscious of his presence so um, in that respect then the model worked really well and it was different from all the other models in that they centered on one character and built the model around that character. Now um, the artwork for the man model itself is outstanding. Uh, the cover is really evocative, you know, and uh, the insides are, and the pictures are also really evocative. Uh, behind me here are the Universal series of uh, monster films produced in the 1930s and 1940s. I've got nearly all of them. I think I have all of them actually. But um, they for me is an evocative gothic charm, if you like, um, sort of depicting gothic horror. Uh, they frightened the people back in the 30s and 40s, but now you look at them and you see them as, um, well, you know, something different, something unique, and as like I said, charm. Uh, the kind of films that uh, they simply don't make anymore, and I love them. I think they're absolutely wonderful. You get that sense of it in uh, the Ravenloft model as well. Um, it, it does uh, sort of evoke that gothicness, particularly with the pictures and the, uh, the style of the model itself which was slightly different from all the other previous models where they ended up taking when you had a border going around it and the pictures were all black and white and incredibly well uh, of high standard really uh, so Clyde Cardwell was responsible for that and the front cover really hits it home for you when you uh, take a look at it and the vampire standing on the back and he's looking over here but over here and uh, you sort of really buy into this gothic, uh, gothic sort of feel now the only problem with the model, or two problems with the model as I see it anyway, uh, the first is the fact that uh, the sense of humour that the Hickmans have is very heavy handed. Um, they've got a mausoleum in the, not a mausoleum, it's a crypt area. Now the crypt area uh, has depictions of those who are buried in there um, with humorous captions which did not stand well at all uh, for me personally speaking in the whole of the model because you're striving to get a gothic feel to it and uh, I suppose a really good dungeon master would have and I, as I would have done and I had that done is describe the cobwebs, the dust, the creaking doors the strange sort of sounds in the distance the, the house itself or the building itself sighing and creaking and making all sorts of odd noises and make you want to turn around and see what's going on behind you and you have the candle or lamps and so on and a sudden gust will sort of blow the candle out all those tropes that you have in these films back there, lightning even, you put them in there and you're working very hard to build up that sort of uh, feel of uh, a dangerous castle if you like and there's no way you're going to sort of survive there if you're not careful. And when you get to the crypt or mausoleum, whichever you want to call it, the uh, headstones or the, the uh, uh, sarcophagus and all that have humorous captions which totally throw out the whole thing and uh, it doesn't sort of work at all in any ways. So me as a dungeon master, I actually removed those uh, humorous descriptions and put other ones in there with sort of blackly um, uh, messages, you know, like dark, morbid messages which sort of really in keeping with the place itself. The other thing I was uh, sort of concerned about is the range of monsters they've got in there. Now you can understand that you have stuff like uh, zombies, you know, like uh, werewolves if you like, because Star City has wolves outside there uh, in Barovia itself. You won't have all the, uh, the monster mash if you like put in there. But uh, you've got to look at the ecology of the place as well, uh, how they mesh together. The one thing that jarred with me, and uh, I dare say you might have done with other people, or they might have just been f fine with it, is the witches. Now they've got witches in the tower. Now witches are pretty powerful in and of themselves. Um, my star might be dominant, he's not that dominant. I mean, it does take a playing card to party to kill him if they're lucky. And also the instruments within Barovia are strong enough and powerful enough to kill Strahd and the witches are there and they're just stuck up in the tower. Um, okay the witches might have a motive to be in that tower and so on but I don't think the witches would be satisfied and happy with that. They want a little bit more and the only way to get a little bit more kill Strahd or find a way of killing Strahd. That's uh, what said to me uh, is why witches are there. They don't really fit in well with the uh, the whole uh, the model and the whole ideas behind the model itself. They're an anomaly. So I removed the witches. I put whites up there. Uh, whites are fun and games for the characters when they go in there. I didn't have the witches in there, as I said, because they didn't sit well with me. I don't know about you, but uh, they didn't. They're like an anomaly, if you like. Anywho, 
that's the only thing. Now all the tropes of the old universe of horror films are put in the uh, model, you've got uh, Vistani, uh, which are the gypsies, the wandering gypsies. Now in the realm of terror, uh, starred, uh, I'm sorry, the realm of terror, the Vistani are those ones who are able to wander from one realm to another with no restrictions, where sometimes they play characters but find the board is closed against them, in particular uh, land, in the core lands. You have to look at my uh, review of uh, the realm of terror to see where I'm going with this. Anyway, uh, within Barovia itself, the uh, ship has made a deal with Star so you can wander in and out of Barovia at will. You have a, a, a portion which they can give to the playing characters, or let's uh, if you kill Star, then the curse is lifted. What I'm talking about basically is there's a mist in uh, Ravenloft itself, and the mist uh, gets sort of pervades the body. And if as long as you stay in the mist, you're fine. But if you try and step foot outside Barovia and the mist, then the mist turns into a poison within your body and kills you within minutes. Going back into the mist, you're okay. So the mist needs how this sort of a um, cure for the mist itself so they can wander in and out of Barovia at will. Uh, of course, starts giving them permission to do so. So that's fine. Now the sort of a plot hook that uh, stands with the Vistani is the fact that they have uh, Taraka card readings like the fortunes of Ravenloft which is one of the big concepts that the model has. So uh, start has variable goals now. Um, when he has the variable goals in the gameplay of the model changes each time those goals are revealed. So in other words, um, the one session could be about trying to find the Sun Sword if you like and use that to kill Strahd. The Strahd is trying to find the Sun Sword himself. So the, no, you can say that. The Taraka card readings will reveal that particular plot line, so that game in of the model will go through there, and that storyline. Different uh, reading will go through a different storyline altogether. So you've got a lot of replayability value there. Uh, you can play it six or seven times, and the goals to start will always be different each time. You can also, as a dungeon master, add some more goals for yourself. The one main theme running through the model is start, uh, his origins uh, given in the actual storyline and adventure is that he fell in love with um, this girl who married uh, his brother and in a fit of jealous rage he killed his brother but also caused the accident the death of the girl when she fell off the battlements. I can't remember exactly how long it means sometimes since I read it. Fell off the battlements to her death and in that moment became a vampire <clears throat> because the deed was so heinous. I mean killing his own brother just because he's uh, jealous of who he's marrying. Not very nice. So uh, and what is a vampire, then he kills all the people in the castle. Then he becomes cursed uh, to have the uh, reincarnated uh, woman, uh, who's, uh, the, the woman he fancied, coming back every other generation or so. And this particular adventure she does come back, so he's tormented by uh, her. So one of the goals he can have in this particular adventure is uh, him Kidnapping her, turning her into a vampire, so they could spend the rest of eternity together, and the player characters try and do what they can to prevent that. Um, so that's the way you uh, start to sort of uh, the motives to start, if you like, in the uh, whole thing. Now the whole um, adventure, as I said, it's gothic, and you get that in spades, and the dungeon master will get that as well, simply by reading the model, let alone running it. Now there's been complaints back in the past about Dwayne Off being railroady. Now the only real roady aspect I could see in there is the fact that the mist keep you in the land and you've got to find the cure to get out to the uh, land without being killed by the mist themselves. So um, the story, you can have a storyline about them trying to find the cure, meeting the Vistani or searching Barovia for the cure itself. That may be kind of, uh, sort of seen as a, a real roady, but the thing about the model is the fact that you can go anywhere. You can go anywhere you want without having to follow a plot line from A to B to go from this part of the thing to that part of the thing to Wherever you want to go, you sort of move the storyline along by encountering the people in that particular area and interacting with them in role playing sessions. You can explore the castle straight away if you want to without bothering with the village of Barovia, or you can go to Barovia and then find the sort of um, plot hooks if you like. Um, you can just go straight to the Vistani and meet them and get more plot hooks. You know, as a free roaming um, model, you've never combined to any one particular area, except when you get into the castle, of course, you're combined to the environment of the castle until you walk out, but we'll start let you. There we are. So, yeah, I don't think it's really roady in that respect because, like I said, it's more free roaming and you can go wherever you want and meet wherever you like and sort of slowly build up the uh, the plot 
for the plague either to sort of uh, get and then work out how to actually get rid of Strahd. Like it's in the uh, model itself, there are several ways of killing him and that's been scattered around uh, the model itself. So successful was uh, Ravenloft, he actually spawned uh, a line of products. Uh, it went into the House of Strahd in the second edition. Um, I can't remember what they called from the third edition and the fourth edition and the fifth edition. Strahd makes an appearance in all the different uh, variations of Dungeons and Dragons, or the different rule sets of Dungeons and Dragons. Different editions, if you want to call it that. Not only really that, he was in uh, books as well. Uh, there's a book called Ice Strahd by P. N. Elrod, I think. Uh, that was a bestseller. Uh, so there's a whole uh, range of uh, books about him. Or uh, the, the run he's in. Zeddy did a whole product line for the second edition that was produced as well called The Realm of Terror, which I reviewed in a, uh, a different video somewhere, so be sure to check that out. So yes, the popularity of Ravenloft has never really died down. In fact, it's got more popular and it's been the go-to for uh, TSR, Wizard of Course, Hasbro ever since. So every time you have a, a new edition, I dare say that Star would be one of the first uh, things to, to be looked at and produced for that particular line. Um, considering it nearly 40 years ago, it shows the strength of our model that is just as good today as it was then. And I think that uh, it's a really, really good model for anybody to pick up and play. Certainly those who have played Dungeons & Dragons before will do them no harm in picking up uh, the Ravenloft model. It's not complicated, there's no sort of uh, rule twist in, uh, in there. You just have to be careful of how you play Star. Because if you play Strahd, uh, exactly how he's supposed to be played in the model, it's a total party kill. Because all you have to do is ambush him, ambush him here and there, hit them and knock down their levels, and then be so powerless that he can just simply walk in and wipe them all out in one big go. Or you can set them zombies in, depends on what Strahd feels at that particular time. So you have to be careful how you play Strahd. Now you can have him as an egotistical maniac, who is a stand there, giving a huge speech like most super villains do and some lucky half lane behind gives him a hit in the back with a plus four weapon and he's dead or you could do other the, the, the means like having a sun sword discovered for the playing character and using that against Strahd but as I said you got to be careful how you play him now you got to play him in such a way that you scare the crap out of the play, players uh, but not so much that he kill all the players so it's a fine balancing act of the dungeon master to run Strahd you can even play the model without making Strahd appear at all. Just like I said, he's such a pervading character that this player characters will send Strahd around the corner in that room or behind me, you know. That's the kind of thing that uh, uh, the model is created for, you know, the whole atmospheric thing. And of course, the, the fact that Strahd is a very, very dangerous character and a frightening character. So if a dungeon master can really pull out that sort of aspect, you'll have such a cracking model to play on uh, Halloween. I don't think you will ever forget it. So there we are. Thank you very much for listening and I uh, hope you have a good time and enjoy Halloween. Get a few uh, glasses of mead down you, a few candles lit in the dungeon, wherever you are holding your session of gameplay, and uh, enjoy it. So, rock on.